Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Alicia from Alicia Be Creative and today's tutorial is this beautiful pastel hand painted leopard tumbler. This is giving me all of the spring vibes and of course you guys know how much I love leopard print as well. So of course everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked down in the description box down below. You'll find discount codes as well as links to all of my social media. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. So you guys already know how we're gonna go ahead and start this tutorial. You already know that I'm starting with a prepped and painted tumbler. This is a 24 ounce plump from the Steel Magnolia Company. I absolutely love all of their tumbler styles and I especially love all of the plumps. So I've already spray painted this white after prepping it and cleaning it with 91% alcohol. And I have at this point now put a very thin layer of epoxy on the cup. So I had a little bit of leftover epoxy from some cups that I had already been in uh, epoxying on my turners and so I used a little bit that I had left in my container to put a little bit of it thin later on here so that we can do the epoxy method for this glitter ombre. So I'm using four colors today which I will list right here. I'm using Champagne from My Aisha Creations, Lavender Secret from Glitter Makes It. I also have 10, 12, 13 from Peachy Olive Glitters and then of course Silent Night from My Aisha Creations as well. These will all be linked down in the description box as well so that you can go ahead and grab these to create this beautiful pastel leopard ombre that I'm creating today for you. So I'm starting on the bottom portion of the cup and we are going in with 10, 12, 13. So 10, 12, 13 is like a pastel green color and I'm really covering the entire bottom with that pastel green and then kind of starting to ombre up towards the what will be the third portion or you know bottom third portion of the cup so I have a nice good coverage on the very bottom and just around that bottom edge and now I'm just lightly sprinkling again tilting my cup up at that 45 degree angle to be able to control how and where my glitter flows but I am trying to get some decent coverage towards the bottom but again we are not establishing full coverage on this tumbler as of yet now I'm gonna go in with the third color, the third color from the top, I should say. I'm going in with Silent Night. So that is that beautiful pastel blue color. This was in the subscription box back in, I believe, December from Aisha Creations. I absolutely love, 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 love this very light, soft blue. It just is so beautiful. And so I am just sprinkling kind of pretty heavy handed, kind of in the middle portion of where uh, in my mind, the blue will start to take over. And then as I start to get down towards the green, I am very carefully angling into the green. So again, holding my cup downward and getting that blue to sprinkle downward into the green. So now I'm gonna flip my cup in the opposite direction, tilting the bottom half up, and I'm gonna very gently and lightly sprinkle upward into where we're going to be placing the purple glitter. So I'm gonna kind of go a little bit in depth with this ombre, because I haven't done one of these in a while, but I also will link right here my very first ombre tutorial that I taught a very great step-by-step kind of how to for ombre if you're someone who struggles with ombres I absolutely love them and wish I could do them all the time um, because it's just my favorite thing to do so now we're going to go ahead and go in again with my 10 12 13 and this is where I'm really going to start to build full coverage on this bottom area because I have a good established area of the blue which is the silent night I want to go back in and reinforce all that green and again making sure I get a nice upward ombre into the blue so it looks flawless and we're getting a nice blend between those two colors so now that I am finished with that I'm going to go back in and we are going to start working on the purple section of this ombre now for my favorite color, purple, we are going to go in with Lavender Secret, which is a really beautiful lavender color, hence probably why it's called Lavender Secret. But this is a very fine cut glitter, finer than actually the other three glitters I'm using. And so I'm doing exactly with Lavender Secret what I did with Silent Night. So I'm building like a really thick band of heavy, heavily condensed glitter in the section where I know there will be the most prominent purple. And then I'm going to start to angle downward into the Silent Night to start to establish the blends between my pink 
or my blue and my purple glitters. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, flipping the cup upward and be able to establish just a little bit of a fade into what will be our last color, which will be pink. And I want to be careful because I was starting to notice that I was getting rather close to the top edge of the cup. And I obviously wanted to make sure I get enough pink on here as well. So I'm trying to be kind of cautious in how much glitter I am forcing upwards towards the top so that you can still see the pink and the pink is there and it's not just the blend of the pink and purple glitters if that makes any sense so once I have gotten all of my purple on there I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my silent night and I'm going to do the same thing I did with 10 12 13 which was to again go back and really cover that that area with the silent night making sure that I'm getting really good coverage in that blue section and blending up really nicely into the purple. That way we can establish kind of that gradient of color and not any harsh lines in between both the purple and the blue sections. So now for the final color, we are going in with Champink, which is the beautiful pastel light pink that I have here from Aisha Creations. And because this is the last color, I really am going to just do full coverage on that top rim, making sure that I get cover every piece of epoxy and section up there. And then I will start to very gently tilt down my cup so the bottom end is downward and try and get a nice blend in between the pink and purple. And so... Once you get to this point, you should have established a pretty decent gradient. And again, I like to go back and forth between my colors, whereas some people like to do all of their colors each one time through and then go back and fill in any gaps. I've just found that I work best when I go back and forth, especially through a multicolor ombre like this. And because I was using all fine glitters, as you guys know, I do like to use usually a mix of chunky and fine, but because this is going to be pastel colors, I wanted them all to be fine glitters. So I felt it was best and easiest if I just went back and forth between the colors to make sure that none of my glitter was doing too much soaking up of the thin layer of epoxy on the cup. So hopefully that makes sense again I will link or I did link that video for another ombre tutorial that you can watch that may be helpful for anybody who is struggling with ombres and of course if you have any questions whatsoever feel free to drop those questions down in the comment section and I will be more than happy to answer any of your questions so now that champagne is on there we're just going to go back in with lavender secret again to make sure we get really good coverage in this section since this was the finest cut of glitter that I had and blend upward into champagne to again get that beautiful beautiful ombre and gradient of these four colors. Now with the pastel colors all beautifully assembled on my cup, I'm going to give this a generous tap of my scissors on the top of the tumbler to get off any of the extra glitter. And then just when you guys thought I was all done glittering, I'm actually going to go over the entire cup to really brighten this up with 4K glitter over the rainbow. This is an absolutely beautiful white glitter and you guys know how much I love my white glitters. I am going to douse this entire cup in this like beautiful rainbow shifting white glitter to really just brighten up the tumbler as well as to help establish a really beautiful blend between the four pastel glitter colors that we used on the cup. So once I am done glittering the heck out of this with my white glitter, I'm going to tap off all the excess and then I'm going to let this dry for a couple of hours and then after that has dried, probably about two to four hours since I used a quick setting epoxy, I am going to spray seal this with three generous coats of Rust-Oleum clear gloss spray paint which I'll post right here and then once that's done we're just going to let those dry and then we'll get into hand painting our leopard spot. Okay, so now for my favorite part, which is the hand-painted leopard spot. So I did speed this clip up a little bit just because it is pretty repetitive, but I am using 357 Magnum from Peachy Olive Glitters, and I'm going to be applying and making my leopard print spots with just using Mod Podge. I'm not going to mix any colorant whatsoever into my Mod Podge. It literally will just be straight Mod Podge and a paintbrush of your choice. I like to use a pretty fine paintbrush, like nothing that's super skinny, um, but definitely a finer brush than I would use to say paint a tumbler. So again, I feel like I've talked about this in a couple of my videos and I'll try and link the ones where I've done hand painted leopard down in the description box. But with hand painted leopard spots, I love doing them. And I actually learned a lot from uh, Jessica Flynn over at Flynn Sisters Boutique. But the key to working with and making hand painted leopard spots is I first started by looking at a pattern that I already 
like had. So pulling up leopard print on either Google or something that you have that already has leopard print and really just establishing what those shapes look like. And so here is another really fun and easy graphic, which I also will post down in the description box. I actually found it on Pinterest. And so it's a really quick guide on how to kind of draw your hand painted leopard spots. It really just kind of shows you the different shapes that the leopard print comes in. And so when I'm hand painting, the biggest thing to remember with this is to be random. So all of the shapes are not the same size. They're also not super close to one another. So you definitely don't want to go in any sort of pattern. The more random your leopard print spots, the better. And how I first started, I did my spots very sparse and far apart because I was afraid I was going to make them too close together and too tiny. But making them farther apart when I first started was actually helpful because then I could go back and I could fill in, you know, smaller leopard spots to kind of close in some of those gaps. So again, definitely when you're doing hand painted leopard, I know a lot of people are like scared to do this just because it's, it's not, you know, it, it, it seems like weird or doesn't look right, especially when you're first trying it. But I promise practice, practice, practice. As I always say, trust the process as I always say as well. And I promise you after a lot of practice and really just looking at another pattern, you are going to absolutely love leopard print. Um, if you're someone like me and you're going to want to do hand painted leopard print on absolutely everything. So once I've gotten quite a few sections of Mod Podge painted leopard print spots, I then just go in with the 357 Magnum, which is a silver glitter over top of those spots and then use my scissors to just tap off any of the excess glitter. This is why it's so important though to seal your glitters before you do this process. That's just going to make it so much easier to be able to brush off any of the uh, silver, you know, overage of your glitter so that it doesn't contaminate your base layer of glitter. So definitely make sure you're sealing in between before you do your hand painted leopard. That way you don't have to kind of fight with your little chip brush as you're trying to get all the little teeny tiny pieces of your hand painted leopard color out from in between your base colored glitters. So I'm just going to continue again to be really random with how I'm painting on my leopard print spots. Again, going from those C shapes to those parentheses shapes to those C shape and a dot. <laughs> that's just kind of what I call them because that's exactly what they look like. And just kind of going all the way down the length of the cup. The other thing that you're going to see me do, and I'm going to fast forward to that right here, is that I go back after I've gotten my entire cup done and I go back and look and see if I have any spaces or gaps in between my leopard print spots that there's too much space if that makes sense. So if I know it is kind of a larger gap, I'll go in with just a small dot leopard print and that is more than enough to kind of take up that space there so that it all looks seamless. And again, it's still that very random leopard print pattern, but it just, you know, picks up some of those gaps, if you will, so that it doesn't look too spaced out and it all looks like it's, you know, the leopard print pattern that I'm going for. So of course, I hope that makes complete sense for you. If it doesn't, and if you need help at all whatsoever for creating your hand painted leopard, definitely leave those in the comment section down below. I also have done a hand painted leopard tutorial in my Facebook group. So feel free to join that as well. You can find that in the, you can find that in the social media links down at the bottom of the description box. And you can go ahead and join that Facebook group and watch all of the lives from that I've done previously in that group. So I'm now just going to finish up making sure I don't have any gaps that I don't really care for. I'll tap off all the extra glitter. I will then steal this again with two times clear gloss spray paint. A couple coats of that after I really have vigorously brushed this off any of the silver glitter that's on my pastel colors. And then we're going to go in with two coats of quick coat epoxy from Illumilite and get this nice and smooth. Now that my cup is nice and smooth, of course, we are going to address any sanding that I need to at this point in the process. And so it's not my favorite part of the process, but it is something that has to be done. And so usually I will go anywhere from one to three coats over my glitter because this was finer glitter. I only really needed two coats of about 25 mLs of mixed epoxy for each coat in order to get a nice smooth finish. So of course I will mostly be addressing the top and bottom rim and that's to make sure that I am knocking down any of those rough edges. So I'm going to start with both a 60 and 100 grit sanding block and I am also going to be using my nail file which I have been using to attack the rim so I am not giving myself a hand cramp every single time I have to sand. So I'm just going to go and cut kind of knock things down a little bit with my 60 grit sanding block 
And then I'm going to take that nail file that I got from Amazon and I am going to really go around that edge. So that top rim is where you want to establish that fine line of stainless steel. And that is just going to help make sure that your final coats of epoxy are really going to adhere to the top outer rim and not over the top, which we don't want. Nothing is worse than having a cup that ends up with a broken seal. So again, going in with that nail trimmer, and just making sure that I get that fine line of stainless steel. After I've gone over that, I will go over the entire cup with the 100 grit sanding block. So that is a finer grit and that's just gonna smooth things out and make sure that I don't have any real rough spots or anything around my tumbler. And then of course, as soon as I feel like this is nice and smooth and I'll be ready for my final coats of epoxy, I'm going to then take my 91% alcohol, which I have in the spray bottle here, spray down my cup, and of course, wipe that down with a paper towel. You, of course, could take it upstairs and use dish open water. That also is acceptable, but I like to show this on camera so that you guys know that there is an alternative and to show you that it's super simple and easy to just clean off your cup, get all that grit and dust off your cup before you put that back on the turner for, of course, final coats of epoxy. So, that is it for today's tutorial. I really loved putting this one together. It's been an idea that I've had for a while and you guys know how much I love leopard print so I could not resist putting this together for our tutorial. So definitely, definitely, if you do recreate this, definitely make sure to tag me on social media. Um, I'd love to see your recreations of this tumbler. but let's go ahead and take a look at the final look at this tumbler. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. It was so much fun to create. Definitely leave any questions for me down in the comment section down below. And of course, before you go, make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys again on Saturday.